we're going to go over how to handle very large data sets that includes both normalizing data and averaging or binning data. So I have this file here that has over 31,000 data points with 16 unique test cases that we ran. Each one of these test cases has the same parameters, so it should have the same result, but there might be some slight variability, and I want to figure out what the performance of each one of the tests are. So what I want to do is be able to normalize the y-axis so that we have the same units of measure, and I want to be able to average the x-axis into specific time increments. So I have this data from the data logger. It has some stuff over to the left, but really the two columns, or the three columns that I'm caring about is a unique parameter test case, the time offset, and this is going to be um, an Excel format time offset. It corresponds to the sample number over here, which is going to be in seconds, but this is stored in um, Excel format. And then we have the actual measurement in watts. So if we just go ahead and plot this right now, we're going to end up plotting it with a pivot chart plot. We can go ahead and select all this um, by default. What we want to do is change this to a line chart, click OK, and what we're going to do is pull in the test case to be our uh, unique legend on the right-hand side. We're going to pull in the time offset to be the X, and we actually want to average the measurements on the y-axis. So if I look at this, this right now is summing, so we're going to come over here and change this to average. That this doesn't really tell me that much about each test uh, and how to compare it between all 16 different tests. They have a different um, maximum, so I can't really look to see uh, with everything normalized if one is going to perform better than the other. So I can come over here, I can look at the I can try to guess and, and kind of do it by myself saying that okay the minimum is going to be seven the maximum is maybe going to be uh, ten at the very end and then look over here to see which one performs better uh, which one has you know less of this fall off curve on the left hand side which one's flatter I can't really do it in uh, the normal state right now and you can also see that this is very noisy with points that are uh, outliers over here because we're not averaging uh, anything. The uh, X values are going to be in one second increment, so we can't average it unless you bin that into 5, 10, 15 second increments. So what we actually want to do is manipulate the data a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. The first thing that we're going to want to do is normalize this data. So uh, typically what I would do if I have a small data set to normalize this is do an array formula and do a sum if. However, if we have 31,000 records, it will be next to impossible to actually do an array formula. So what we're actually going to do is manually find the maximum value for each test case. Uh, it will take a little bit of time up front, but that way we can put into a separate VLOOKUP table and we can manipulate the data uh, and actually add to this very, very efficiently, and it does not take up a lot of resources in Excel. So since I know that I have 16 test cases, I'm actually going to end up adding, uh, we'll say about 17 rows up top for our VLOOKUP. I'm going to get the unique values of the test cases. So you can highlight all the test cases. So you go over to Data, Advanced. The little trick will actually allow you to um, copy something to another location, but it'll allow you to copy unique records only, meaning that you can remove duplicate values. We don't have a special criteria range. Uh, our list range is going to be Unfortunately, it's not what you highlight, so you have to do it explicitly in this advanced filter. Copy to, we're just going to put it somewhere towards the top so we can easily access it. You need to make sure you click Unique Records Only. Uh, the header will always come in, even if it's duplicated, so I like to include test case. If we would have started at test one, you would have had test one and test one here, so just be careful of that. We know that we're going to have these test cases over here. Now what I want to do is find the maximum value when we have test case one the maximum value when we have test case two, and so on. So I'm going to filter this data. And what I actually want to do with this filter data is look at the max value, but I only want to look at the max value for the filter data, not the entire set. So we're going to use a function called subtotal. And subtotal works very nicely with filter data. So with the subtotal, you can look at the um, average of only the displayed rows, the count of only the displayed rows, but we want to find the maximum in order to normalize this. 
So that's going to be four comma. And then what we can do to make sure we include the entire data set is come over here and just highlight all of column J. This works as long as this subtotal is not part of column J or else you'll get a circular reference. So now what we need to do is um, close off the subtotal. Since we're in a time column, that is going to come back as um, not formatted. And this says 10.2. So that's going to be the maximum of every single test case that we have. Well, if we only want to get the maximum of test case number one, we can come over here. We can see that's going to be 8.31. So we'll copy and paste that value over here in test case one to start building our VLOOKUP table. We'll do the same thing for test case number two. And once we get all that, We can populate it all the way down, and now we have our VLOOKUP that we can use for our normalized data. So if we come over here, we'll want to look at our um, normalized measurement. What this is going to basically be is the current measurement that we have, all 31,000 data points. Now we want to divide it by the maximum value that we just created with that VLOOKUP table. So we want to uh, look up the current test case value. We're going to come over here to this table that we have over here. We need to make sure that the test case 1 through 16 is going to be on the left-hand side. We'll go ahead and make that an absolute reference. We want to pull in the second column, and we want to get an exact approximation or exact value because we know that um, we're not going to have any approximations in here. So if we hit enter, we got that. We can copy it down. Okay, so we know that at least something's going on here. Let's copy it down all the way and make sure that we have all 31,000 plus rows. Now, a normalized data, nothing should be greater than one. So we can do a quick sanity check by clicking on the filter icon and making sure that one is going to be the maximum value. So now that we know that, um, we can safely look at, well, if we actually unselect everything, look at one, we should have 16 number ones. If we do that, or 16 or more number ones, because uh, it could be at the top of the measurement uh, multiple times. We can come. Uh, come down here and see that we have 100. So everything looks to be about correct. And uh, from here, we can then look at some averaging functions. So what I'm going to do is average our time offset, which is going to be, as I was mentioning before, this Excel value. So if we do scientific, it's going to be Excel value for seconds. So the way that Excel does um, seconds is it looks at uh, the number of seconds in a day and makes that into a decimal point. So what that's actually going to be is we have 24 hours in a day, we have 60 minutes in an hour, and we have 60 seconds in a minute. So Excel takes this, 86,400, makes that into a decimal, and that's going to represent one second. So if we look at that, 1.157 e to the negative 5 is going to be one second. So we have that right down here. So you can see this can be one second, two seconds, three seconds in Excel format. This 86400 is going to be important for the next step that we want to do. So what we're going to basically want to do is average. And let's say we want to average uh, the data every, I'm sorry, the x-axis, so the time, every five seconds. So what this is going to look like, and we're going to call this um, average time offset that we're going to basically round the time offset. We're going to need to convert this because this is going to be in decimal, the uh, 1.15 e to the negative 5. We want to convert this to an integer, 86400, and we're going to divide it by the bend second. So if we don't want to have any averaging, this would be 1. But if we want to have an average, we're going to divide this by 5. What we're then going to do is round it to 0. So now it's going to say, if, um, well, why don't we just go ahead and look at this. So it's going to, well, let's make this an absolute value. And you can come down here and see that it's going to say, um, if this is going to be zero seconds, one second, or two seconds, we're going to divide it by five. So that's going to be always below 0.5. So that gets rounded down to zero because we have the round going to zero decimal points. But as soon as we have three seconds over here, 3 divided by 5 is going to be 0.6, so it's going to round up to 1. 0.8 is going to round up to 1, 1 is going to round to 1, 1.2, 1.4 are both going to round down to 1. But as soon as we come up to 1.6, it's going to round up to 2. 
So this is just rounding to the nearest um, integer, basically. If we want to actually get this as our time, though, we want to multiply it back by our average, make that an absolute. And so what we're going to do is put this into um, a number. I don't want decimal places. I don't want a separator. And so you can see that these are going to now be average. These normalized data points will be average all with time zero in our pivot chart. Um, all of these normalized measurements are going to be average with time five seconds and so on. So we can copy that all the way down. We can see that it goes up to um, 2,085 seconds. And right now, we should be good to look at our normalized data. So um, at first, we only did H, I, and J. Well, we're going to now do H, I, J, and then our two new columns, K and L, for our pivot chart. So once again, we're going to come over to a pivot chart. We selected the data correctly. Uh, before we add anything, we're going to change it to a line chart. Click OK. We're still going to have the test case be our legend. But now, instead of time offset, we're going to do our average time offset. And instead of measurement, we're going to do normalized measurement. So what we still want to do um, we don't want the sum, we want the average because that's what we ended up doing with our uh, bend or average seconds. So come over here, click on average, that now we can see um, a few things. First off, that everything is normalized to one, so we can actually analyze performance um, relative to uh, each test case. But if we zoom in on here like we did before, we can see that some of the outliers, we still have some outliers that, that Point up and down, but that these outliers now are um, greatly reduced. So here we can see that uh, with our normal parameters here, that this orange graph uh, has only a 2% decline over about 30 minutes, whereas, um, and that's going to be test 12, whereas test 15 has somewhere around 9.5% uh, decline. So we can say that under um, Normal conditions with everything held constant, the test 12, most likely, depending on your parameters, if you want a higher value, is going to have better performance than test 15. Now, we still have some of these um, outliers here. It's not that smooth. So something else that we can do is instead of averaging every five seconds, let's switch this over to 15. Now you can see it goes from 0 to 15 to 30. If we come over here and we refresh our data, you can see that uh, we have less outliers. We still have some ups and downs, but this smooths out the curve a lot more. So depending on how granular or how smooth you want the data, um, with this technique, you can come over here and bin or average your data by any given offset that you want. I hope that this helps with dealing with large amounts of data, normalizing data, and uh, looking at how to average some of this data. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you.